So in this video, we're just going to have a look at how to find the right limb of the pancreas. As I said before, finding the right limb of the pancreas in the dog is the easier of the two, uh, two limbs and, and obviously the body to find. In the cat, the reverse is true, so we'll find the left limb in the body are the easier to find. Starting point is we're going to find the right kidney. So dorsal plane image of the right kidney, uh, in much the same way we, as we'd find the left kidney, <clears throat> just bearing in mind that the right kidney is usually a little more cranial, so we may have to scan intercostally in some dogs. Once we've found a dorsal plane image of the right kidney, what we're going to do is physically slide our probe down the body wall, trying to maintain a similar contact angle between the probe and the body wall, so around about 90 degrees between the two. And what we're looking for is the first piece of small intestine, and I say small intestine, stress that point because often the ascending colon will lie in this region as well, and we don't want to be looking for, for large intestines. So the first piece of small intestine that we come to, lying immediately below the right body wall. So there we have right kidney in the image. We're now going to slide ventrally, watching the screen, and there, appearing in the top of the screen now, we have a, that's the first piece of small intestine we've come to. And if you look, it's lying immediately below the body wall. There is nothing between body wall and that piece of intestine. If you want to just double check that it is indeed uh, duodenum, which is what we're looking for, then duodenum is the only piece of small intestine that follows the, bo the body wall for any uh, distance in a straight line. And if you follow it cordially, we can then see there, if I fan just up and down a little bit, you can see it doing a, almost a 180 degree turn. That's the caudal flexure of the duodenum. So we can be certain that that's the piece we're looking for. The other thing is that the duodenum is ever so slightly, about approximately one millimeter in most cases, thicker uh, wall thickness than the rest of the small intestine. If I just come caudally again a little bit, you can see just creeping in the top right of the image there, a little piece of jejunum, and you can see that that is clearly thinner, <coughs> excuse me, than the piece of duodenum we've got on the screen uh, coming in from the left hand side. From this point, if we rotate our probe anti-clockwise by 90 degrees, we're going to end up with a nice cross-sectional image through the duodenum. Now the right limb of the pancreas lies along the duodenum on the right body wall. It lies dorsally and slightly medially to it. So given that I've rotated uh, the probe anti-clockwise, the left of the screen now corresponds to dorsally, so we're looking to the left of the screen uh, with respect to the duodenum and possibly a little bit deeper to it on the image as well. And if I just pause the image about there, we can see uh, a region of uh, almost isoechogenicity compared to the duodenum and the surrounding tissue, which corresponds to, to the region of the right limb of the pancreas in cross-section. From there, if I rotate back the way we came, so I'm going to rotate back into longitudinal plane, pick up that duodenum again, and if we're just tiny fanning movements from there, what we're looking for is to pick the um, right limb of the pancreas up in longitudinal plane, and remember it's medial to the duodenum, so we're looking to see it below the duodenum on the screen. A little fanning movements should enable us to pick that structure up. It can be quite tricky to see if there's intestinal gas, so sometimes you just have to you have to wait for that intestinal gas to pass. So here, now that some of that gas has passed, we can see a nice longitudinal view of the pancreas immediately deep to the duodenum. If I just freeze that image there, we can see uh, below the duodenum there on the screen, we have a region um, immediately deep to the duodenum, so medial to it, which corresponds to the right limb of the pancreas. And we can also see a vessel running down the middle of it. Now in the right limb of the pancreas, that is the pancreaticoduodenal vein. Bear in mind that if you're scanning the left limb of the pancreas and you see what appears to be a vascular or vessel-like structure down the middle of it, that in fact is a pancreatic duct. So we don't see uh, the pancreatic duct in the right limb. Similarly, we don't see the blood supply, the drainage in the left limb of the pancreas. So just to run through that one more time, we're going to start by finding longitudinal or dorsal plane image of the right kidney. We're then going to slide down the body wall looking for the per first piece of small intestine that we come to, which we've got there. Then we're going to rotate anti-clockwise, so that's our duodenum now in uh, transverse plane, and we can see the region of the pancreas reasonably well uh, outlined on that, on that image. And it is ill-defined, that's one of the features ultrasonographically of a normal pancreas. Then we're going to rotate back the way we came, and then we're just going to make minute fanning adjustments up and down, and we're hoping to see the region of the pancreas then 
just deep to that duodenum on the right hand side there. Just bear in mind, like we're scanning the rest of the pancreas, if there's intestinal gas or the dog is obese, then you may find that that has a, a bit of an adverse effect on how difficult or easy it is to find, find the uh, structure. Thank you.